Ari Chief, welcome back to this self-inflicted torture of a series that I've decided to commence where I'm going to go through every single button in Autodesk Inventor and explain what it does make. And in this video, we're looking at part mode, the 3D model tab, and then the modify panel. We're going to go through every single one of these buttons and explain what they do. Timestamps will be in the description of the video and in the pinned comments so you can jump straight to a button of a particular interest. And also please note that I'm not doing this with the intention that you follow me along. This is not a tutorial per button. It is simply a reference for somebody to jump to a button and see a demo of what it does. That's the only purpose of this video. It's not a guide or a tutorial per function. And also please do get subscribed with the notification button turned on if you want to be notified when all future videos in this series are done and released onto the channel. And first on the list on the panel is the hole command. You wouldn't believe this mate, but uh, it makes holes. Ah, you know, who'd have thought it, man? What a turn up for the books that is. So it, it drills a hole through your model, which is essentially a circular cut, which you can do by drawing a circle and extruding it through. If you were confused as to why there's something that does the same thing, it can be done. A circular hole can be done with an extruded circle. But with the hole command, you get the added benefit of including metadata into the hole, such as thread type, hole size, standard, class, uh, thread direction, all that kind of stuff, which is plugged into the feature and can then be called up onto a drawn later on using a whole note. So although the end result will look like something you can do manually, you do get a bit of extra information by using the whole command. So with 2019, Inventor 2019, you'll get this palette when you start the whole command. Anything earlier, you'll get a different looking dialog box. But the way the whole command works is pretty simple. You tell it where you want the hole to be, which is normally going to be on a flat face. You can put holes on uneven faces, but it requires extra work features and just, just a bit of extra work. But you can select the face and then you go through the rest of the features here and start defining the type of hole that you want. So you can have a thread hole, a threaded hole, tapped hole, clearance hole. There's a whole different types of uh, the hole type, like counter bore, counter sink, spot face, and it'll change and update the preview and you can go through and configure it how you want it to be. It entirely depends on what it is you're going for. And then you can define your size down here and then it updates the preview. Once you're ready to go, you just click OK and there's your hole with thread on it. The thread is just a picture. It's just a bitmap. It's not actually grooved. There is an add-on you can get. It's called Cool Orange Thread Modeler, I do believe. I've done a video on that, but it was a few years ago now. And it will change the pictured thread to be a grooved thread. But there's your hole, mate. Uh, next up on the list, we're going to be looking at Fillet. Fillet is, uh, contrary to the name, it's got nothing to do with fish. It's all to do with creating rounds on edges, getting rid of sharp corners for those health and safety reasons. So, say for example, I mean, pretty much everything that you look, look at anything in your room right now, there is not a razor sharp edge on it. It's either got a beveled edge or a very small, or even in some cases, a uh, significantly sized fillet slash round on it. So you would do that in Inventor using this fillet button here. Once that launches, you get a dialog box, which has evolved over time and it's got quite a lot of functionality in it. So you can start just by picking the edges that you want to put a round on and Inventor is really good at it, uh, providing feedback, delivering good indication as to what it's going to look like if you were to commit to the fillet so based on the size we've got here which is 0 0.25 we're going to increase that to one mil for example and you can see it's going to put a one mil radius round on those edges uh, we've got different types of fillets as well you can have a variable radius fillet so you can maybe start it at one mil and then it'll go up to two mil and then back down to one mil and that'll be a variable radius fillet You've got different types here. You can have a smooth G2 fillet, which you can just about, it changes the, the, the contour of the fillet as it comes away from the, the original edge. It's either going to be a tangent or it's going to be following the G2 smooth algorithm. And in 2019, we've got this inverted fillet here, which will do a backwards fillet, which is quite nice. Uh, we've also got face fillets and full round fillets as well. There are other options available to you. But once you're, you're done with that, you click OK. And then there's your rounded off fillet, which as per pretty much every other modify command that we're going to do, you'll end up with a browser node here defining the fact that you've done a fillet. And you can go back in there at any point and change the radius or the type of fillet 
at your leisure. There you go, mate. That's fillets in a nutshell. And as for chamfer, mate, well, chamfer works in a very similar way to fillet, whereas instead of placing a rounded solution onto an edge, it creates a straight beveled finish onto an edge. With chamfer, you don't get as many customization options as you do with fillet, but it still gets the job done. If you've got a relatively recent version of Inventor as well, when you pick an edge, you'll get uh, a realistic preview of what it's going to do. So there's a one mil chamfer put onto the uh, the edge that I've just picked. If we look at it side on, you can see what it's doing. Instead of a round, it's a straight beveled finish. And then you can modify the size using this variable here. You'll get an updatable preview in the uh, the main graphics window and you can modify the distance and angle and the, si the size of the chamfer. You can specify it as a uniform size or distance and then an angled bevel. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for chamfer. It's it's a, it's a get the job done type of a command. It's not got much customization, but it does uh, it does work nonetheless. So there you go. There's your chamfers. Once you're finished with those, uh, it uh, bevels the edge, mate. It looks it looks neat and tidy. So looking at shell now with a completely different model. Shell's a, an interesting one. It has to be strategically actioned at a certain point in a model's life because there will come a point where you just can't do a shell because there's maybe too much detail in the model for it to actually solve and compute. But the way shell works, and you can only do this once as well in a model's life, is it takes all of the faces on a model, right, each one of these faces, and it offsets the face internally or externally by a distance. It, it creates a, a mass between those two offset faces and keeps that in that only. Uh, that might not make a lot of sense, but it will do once you see it happening. So we'll action shell, and then you pick a thickness. So let's offset by, let's keep it as one mil thickness. And uh, it's automatically picked up all the faces. And if we were to just click OK, it looks like nothing's happened. But if we do uh, a half section view, for example, and then look through, let's go through there. So that's what it's done, mate. It's taken each one of the outer faces, it's offset them by one mil, right? Each one of these faces offset by one mil, even this internal face here it's offset that by one mil and then it creates a solid between those two faces and then what's left is hollowed out see what i mean so that's what shell does and the reason why you can only do this once in a model's life is because there will come a point where there's just too much detail like for example if we were to try and shell something like this that just wouldn't work because yes you could possibly shell that face offset that by one mil but then you've you've got these beveled edges. It'll start trying to shell the beveled edges, and it, it just won't work. It just won't work with those kind of faces. So um, yeah, it's just, it has to be strategically done uh, quite early on in the model's life. It's quite good for just you know hollowing out a cube to make a box, for example. But um, at the same time as it's doing the shell, if we just edit this feature, you can also tell it to remove a face. So it can say remove, say that top face, and it'll delete the face. Uh, that you that you pick and then you end up with this quite nice hollowed out effect that looks a little something like that so yeah that's shell mate it's, it is really nice you can have variable thicknesses as well for the faces so you can have maybe the majority of the faces is one mil thick and then you can manually select a couple of the other faces to be two mil thick or three mil thick and you can have that uh, that variable wall thickness with the shell but yeah that's uh, that's your shell mate it's it's nice i haven't done much stuff on shell in the on the channel but it's got uh, it's got a it's got a good few uses with it i like it and now we're going to look at draft which contrary to the name has got nothing to do with a windy day or flatulence this is all to do with a part being pulled out of a mold to uh, compensate for a part being pulled out of a mold it adds an angle to uh, a face to simulate it or to compensate for it for being pulled out of a mold. So the way you would work this, you'd select draft. Now we've got a number of different options here, but I'll keep it simple. You specify the pull direction using uh, this first fixed edge button here. You specify the pull direction, which is the direction that the part will be pulled out of a mold. And uh, top tip, don't select automatic face chain because in most cases that doesn't work. It has to be a pretty perfect part and very square in nature for that, for that to work with very few faces. But if you select automatic blending and then pick your face, it's gonna automatically blend any faces that are attached to the one that you select. So we selected this top face and you can see here, it's adding a, it's adding a, an angle to that face, but then it's blending this lower face in with it and it's compensating for that additional angle there, which is really nice. 
so there's your draft angle so you can specify the draft angle i mean it defaults to 2.5 i'm no plastic part expert so I've, i have no idea what your typical draft angles would be but there it is and it works pretty well so if we just undo you can see uh there's the draft angle being added to compensate for it being pulled out of the mode may yeah that's draft read right, next up on the panel is the thread command and this works in a similar way to the whole command in that it references the same internal thread database that inventor has with all the thread standards built into it but thread doesn't drill a hole it doesn't create any extrusions or openings or anything like that it takes thread takes an existing cylindrical face whether it be an internal or an external face and it will add a thread feature to that face based on the size of the face which is quite nice so when you activate the thread command and you pick a face internal or external inventor looks and it, it detects the diameter of the face and when you go into the specification tab it automatically says well okay well based on the size of this you want to be going for a size 15 thread and you'll and you'll be all like Ah, oh, remake. Cheers. Thanks for that. <laughs> I owe you one. And then you can select thread, pick the external face, and based on that size, it's size 25, mate. And it looks really nice. Now, at this point, you do always look at these and you're, you're massively dissatisfied with the look of it because that looks absolutely hideous. And you want it to be physically modelled. For a lot of engineers, they don't really care but it's just one of those things that it would be nice to have the option. Unfortunately, the option to have these physically grooved isn't with Inventor. You have to go to the Cool Orange website, download their free thread modeler application. It's a little plugin. I've already done a video on it, mate, ages ago. And that will convert the pictorial thread into a physical grooved thread, if that's something that you want but not everybody does. This has all the metadata programmed into it for when you place it into a drawing and it'll call off a whole note or a thread note based off of the thread properties that you've programmed into the thread feature, mate. So that's thread. Right, and in this next one, we're going to look at two commands in one go. We're going to look at combine and delete face in one operation because they tend to work nicely together. So combine is a tool that allows you to perform a subtraction. You can take two solid objects and use one as a tool body to remove it its shape from another object. So basically what I've done is I've saved this part that we've just been working on. Uh, to a file called plug and then I've modeled up this just big block and what I'm going to do is use derive which we looked at in the last video mate and this inserts a body into a body it's like an xref it inserts a part into a part so if I derive the plug into this part you can see it puts it into the middle here and it's intersecting through my solid like that and then uh, I can use combine to subtract this from this and it'll leave a plug shaped opening inside this block it works quite nicely so you select combine the base is going to be this the tool body is going to be this and then you say i want to cut click ok and then you get a plug shaped opening inside your model and it's it's like it is it's like a tool body isn't it? it's like a subtraction or a union as it might be called in some cases and obviously the elephant in the room is this <laughs> It's left this internal face here, and that is because there's a massive hole running through here. So that solid entity, or that opening there, that's been left as this here. And that's when you use delete face, mate. So you can say delete face, and then just pick that face and say heal it up. If you don't say heal it up, it does this, which doesn't look very good. So you just say heal up any irregularities that might left be left over, and then there you go, that's delete face. And you've now got a perfect plug-shaped opening which you can then you can then make it look like you'd intended to do it all along there. Yeah, that's pretty nice, isn't it? And the good thing about this and using derive part is that it's all nicely adaptive. So if we go back to the original plug and let's change the size of it, uh, it'd probably be best to change something like this one here. So it's a, a visibly obvious change. Let's change that to 30 so it's significantly different in size. There we go, we'll save him off. And then we go back to our derive part. You can see the little flash of lightnings there. It's saying, oi, this plug you, you, you derived in your model has changed. It needs updated. So you select update. Watch what happens to this hole when I click update. Boom. There you go. Opening has been updated. So that's, that's really nice. I do like that. That's combine for a, a subtract of a body and then delete face. In addition to delete face though, you've also got this option here called select lump or void. Delete face will pick like a face like that and it'll, it, it removes the face. Don't, don't do that for making boxes, by the way. That's not a good idea. Use shell for that. But you can use delete face. 
for delete faces, but lump or void will pick if there's like a floating entity, if there's like a floating bit of solid in your model, then lump or void will remove that. I don't have one here, so I can't show you it, but that's what delete lump or void will do, mate. So that's combine and delete face working together in perfect harmony. And now we're on to one of my favorite tools. One of my personal favorites is thicken slash offset. I do loves this one. You can do all kinds of crazy creative things with thicken offset. Uh, it's used, f it's, it works almost like shell in that it takes faces. So say these three faces here and it offsets them and then creates a solid in between the offset. So it's like extending faces in a kind of way. So if you select thick and offset, pick these three faces here, you can see what it's gonna do. It's offsetting them all by this distance here, which is uh, one mil, we'll change that to two mil. Click okay, and then there you go, that's the thick and it's thickened those faces. And it looks, uh, it looks pretty, it's pretty easy to do that. It just really quickly gives you this nice extra bit of material rather than having to go editing original sketches and whatnot. So that works quite nicely. But in our example, we can use it even more creatively. So this here is an exact plug shaped opening, right? Remember we, we slotted the plug in here as a tool body and subtracted it. So there's absolutely no wiggle room in here whatsoever for the plug. So you might want a bit of tolerance in there and you can use thicken slash offset for that. So we can say uh, activate thicken, go to more, select automatic face chain, which automatically selects the faces that are attached to the face that you click, which uh, is a thing. Uh, and there you go, there's your face chain. If for some reason it doesn't pick this bottom one, I don't know why, so we'll pick the bottom one. And then rather than offset inwards, which would mean the plug wouldn't fit in there anymore, you can go the other way by say uh, one mil, for example, and click okay. And on face value, it looks like nothing's happened, but if we do an undo, and see it's offset those faces by one mil and that gives us a little bit more wiggle room for the plug that's going to be slotted in there so that's quite nice i do like me some thicken right that's one use for it another use for thicken is for creating fancy solids out of services for example so i've done a separate video on the freeform tools a couple of years ago but uh, i'll eventually cover them in this series but if we drop a plane say on here uh, maybe there i don't care what the size is let's say one why does it do that why does the cursor jump to the end of the millimeters suffix that's really annoying but never mind right 70 it's done it again <laughs> that's incredibly annoying it's all oh, right anyway i'll log that as a defect on another day right okay there we go so there's our faces and then what we can do is we can create a nice wavy creative shape is something like this i mean I, I don't know what i'm doing i'm just making this up as i go hello i didn't mean to pick that one up but it doesn't matter let's pick that up it's just so we've got something that would be pretty impossible to make out of standard sketches but there you go there's like a, a cloth looking thing click finish freeform and you end up with a thin walled surface with no mass so if you want to convert that into an actual solid the only real way to do that is using thicken pick your surface specify a distance how thick do you want it so zero uh, one mil we'll keep it as one mil click okay and then we can turn off the free forms visibility and there's your uh there's your thick and solid that's really nice i do love thicken you can do all kinds of crazy creative things with it and once you've got your solid made up that's now that is now a genuine solid that can be you know filleted and chamfered and whatever else you know it's Really nice. Dude loves me some thicken. All right, split. Split's going to be a hard one to demonstrate because it has millions and millions of different uses in all kinds of different scenarios and circumstances. But essentially, it takes a, a tool body or a, a, a face or a plane or some kind of dividing entity and it will create a split line for either just to split a face in half or to trim a solid. So I'll do a couple of examples of this. So let's float a plane. Uh, above here by say well 30 mil cover it yeah but we'll so we'll do a 2d sketch on here and what i'll do is i'll just do a, a simple arc from there to there there we'll, we'll keep it simple and then we'll extrude that arc down through there right so that's sort of like a think of that as a guillotine it's like a razor blade going through the solid at the moment it's not doing anything it's just sitting there floating in space but that's what we can use to split this solid so we'll turn off this one here activate split and there's a couple of different split techniques. So one would be to say, right, this is the split tool and we just want to split the face. So the first option here is split face, click that face, click OK. And it's now broken this top face. So the bottom face is still one con continuous full face, but it's split the top face in it too. Why the hell would you do that? Well, you can change the color now of this, this half to be, I don't know, 
bronze and then this half could be something else so that's a good way of dividing faces up so you can apply different painted finishes to different areas of your model but another good way of, of utilizing this is for FEA so if you need to apply a point load to a specific area of the face with FEA it just asks you to pick a face. So if you would apply, say, 2,000 newtons of force to this face, it applies it evenly over the entire face. Whereas if you split the face, it applies the 2,000 newtons of force to just this region here. So that's another reason why you'd use a split. So if we undo that, I'll show you a, another way you'd use split, and that is to trim off areas of your model. So you can say split, and then you can activate this one here, which is trim solid. Use that as the split tool, and it's going to trim everything on that side of the of the tool. And then you click OK, and it trims it off like that. And then you can disable this. Uh, can we disable that? We should be able to turn it off. There's visibility off. There you go. And then it's trimmed the solid off. So that's the split tool. It's got a, it's got many many more uses than just those, but those are a couple of examples of where you would use the split tool. Read. Moving on to direct is a command with not the best name. It doesn't give you any indication in the name as to what it does, but it's a quick and dirty way of making modifications to your model where you might not have the ability to change sketches and parametric features. So for example, if someone sends you a model from another CAD package, it won't come in with features like this. It'll just have holes, openings, and faces, and that kind of thing. Direct Edit allows you to pick a face. For example, we can select this face here, and then you can drag that face down by whatever distance you want, and then it makes those direct edits without having to go into sketches and whatnot and, and change things. And it works with pretty much with pretty much anything. So again, as long as direct bl automatic blending is enabled, it'll fix anything that's associated to that face that you're moving. So that's one reason you'd use direct editing. It's for when you don't have parametrics available to make modifications to your model. But if we go back to this one here that we're working on earlier, we'll do a split. We just looked at that in the last section. We're gonna use this one here, split solid. We can split this solid in half using this split tool and that it's not trimming it, it's not splitting the face, it's actually splitting the solid into two solid bodies. So we've got solid one now, we've got solid, well, solid two and solid three in this case. But then you can use direct edit to pick up uh, the solids, that one there, and then you can divide it out and move it around like that. So you can take entire bodies and move them around uh, part space using direct edit. So that's uh, that's that's what you'd use that for. And now we're on to the commands that Autodesk have deemed to be so uh, infrequently used that they're only worthy of being on the expandable panel and hidden away. So we're looking at move bodies. This one here is almost, there's probably some niche uses for it, but it's almost been superseded by this one here. Uh, but move bodies does something very similar to what we've just done in the last section, actually. It takes an entire body and it will move it based off of X, Y, and Z coordinates. So you can say, move that body by negative 10 on the X axis, which is that axis there. So it's gonna move it along by 10. Well, but that's something that you could have done using direct edit. Uh, you select apply and then it's moved it. You do have a few extra options here. This is quite sneakily hidden away here, but you've got this little drop down, and you can specify array, which is your own edge or your own axis uh, to move it along. If, it, if you don't wanna move it exactly along X, Y, and Z, you can pick an edge and it'll move it along that. And then we've got rotate as well. You can rotate it around uh, an axis so you can select the y axis for example and then we can say rotate that by 90 degrees and then uh, we want to rotate that body there and then there you go it's rotated around that axis by 90 degrees so yeah you can do most of this stuff may in using direct but it's something which i think i don't know why it's still there there, there may be a niche use for it which i just can't think of off the top of my head but i i suspect that's something that'll get retired in the future if it can be completely superseded by this and next is a bend part again i've got a dedicated video on bend part on the channel but just very quickly showing you what this does i've modeled a, a shelled box here which is turned into sort of like a picture frame which is just a an extruded 150 by 75 box shelled out by two millimeters but then if I sketch on this face here, what bend part does is allows you to specify a bend line. So if we put a line up here, this is going to be a center line for a bend. Activate bend part, select your bend line, 
and it does this. It bends the entire model. So this, again, is something like Shell has to be done strategically because once you get to a point where you've got too much detail, this command will fail or it will have so much to do that it will just fail to compute and the inventor will just freeze. But you can specify things like the, uh, the, the bend angle, the bend position, the bend radius. So we can put in, say, a bend radius of 50 mil there. So you can, you can get quite creative with this. So that could be... I mean, that could be anything. I mean, that would be pretty difficult to do without using bend part. Uh, that's bending at a 90 degree angle, so we can change that to say 45 degrees, uh, and then click OK, and it bends the model. Then it's kind of done. You can do it twice, so you could you could draw another bend line sort of mid plane here, going through the center line of that edge down, and then bend just this section here, for example. So there's you can do it more than once. But uh, it's a quite nice little tool, actually. I do like Ben Pot. It's limited uses. It has to be something curvy that you're working on, but uh, it does the job quite nicely. I do like it. And now for my final trick, we're going to look at Copy Object, mate, which I've already done a video on, a very, very old video, which I used it to perform a subtract. Copy Object is very similar to Derive, but it gives you a few more options. It's very niche, mate. It is really niche. That's why it's been sort of shuffled off onto the expanded panel. But I do have quite a few uses for this, and it, you can get quite clever with it. So the, the use case that I've mostly used this for is like Derive. I've got an assembly here made up of two parts. This plug is constrained to the top of this plate. And what I want is an opening in this heat sink, right, in this plate, wherever the plug is. So I want it to cut a hole where the plug intersects with the plate. And you can use copy object for that. But instead of it being all done in part mode via derive, you can have the cut being driven from the assembly level, if you know what I mean. So what we would do is we would double click the heat plate and then would activate copy object and then ask inventor to look at where the plug is, right? So you pick that and it's going to take a bounding surface of the plug and copy it into the heat sink. So it's almost like a reference wherever the plug is create a bunch of surfaces in the heat plate, make sure there are surf associative surfaces or composite. And then you get this little orange bounding surface thing here. And that's like a, a copy, like a ghost of the plug in the heat plate. I hope I'm explaining this right. It is really difficult to explain. Uh, but then when we click return, if we were to move the plug, so we'll make sure our selection priority is on part priority, pick up the plug, move that. And when I let go, that orange surface in the heat plate is going to update because the, uh, the the plug's been moved. So that's what copy object does. It creates a copy of an object in another part. That's only half of the story, though. You then use another command to actually create the whole. So that's not what copy object does. It just does half the job. So we can use something like sculpt, which I'll cover when we eventually look at this panel here in this series. But we can say use the surfaces or sculpt the surfaces as a cut and we need to cut them the other way. So this opening here is where the plug intersects with the plate. Cut that and create this opening. And you can see it's left again, this little internal void here, which we can use uh, delete lump or void, that floating little lump there to get rid of the opening. And then that's now given us a plug shaped opening in the heat plate using a copy object and in that case, a sculpt. So if we move that across to say there, you can see that's now updating wherever that plug moves to, mate. It's quite nice, quite neat and tidy. So that's what Copy Object does, or one of the uses for it. And that'll do it then. That'll do it for all of the commands on the Modify panel in part mode slash 3D model tab as of Inventor 2019. You've done good if you made it this far, mate. You've done good. Uh, thank you to everyone who's subscribed thus far. If you do want to see more of these videos, then please do subscribe and turn on the notification thingy and so it'll buzz you when I upload a video. And uh, yeah, thanks very much, mate. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!